windows to the divine. And Rothko's work is a window to the divine, whereas Raphael's Madonna is not. It, is, it stops you. It, it, it absorbs you into the sensuality of the painting itself. So I don't remember the second part of your question. Um, how do you avoid elevating that art? Because of, I'm not going to deal with that. Um, <laughs> that is a struggle. That is, that is the, the real problem and, and the tension. And I think in our afternoon discussion, if you're here for that, that we should, we should really tackle some of that. Someone make a note of that. I have a pen, but I can't think and write at the same time. <laughs> um, because um, I think it's really important. The art world and the uh, church world have been divorced for some time. And that's one of my favorite analogies for this process. And it's time, enough time has passed, people. We've remarried, and, you know, it's time to talk again. Just to talk, that's all. And just start with it. And we can't because of that very issue, you know, <laughs> elevating bad art um, in the Christian world. It, it's a different function, you know. It's, it's about the function of the art, about the sensitivity to the space, and, and so on. There's just so many issues around that. That you've nailed it. That's that is uh, one of the reasons that you have that Nick Webb saying that it, you know you can't say beauty. And you can't say God. So you would agree with that. I agree entirely. I mean, as a graduate, so yeah. God does not come up in studio no. classes. And if it well, does, you better not you get the side eye. <laughs> do, you, do you also see, though, do you also see there any evidence of what I was talking about in terms of um, some students wanting to talk about spiritual, personal, universal issues? Uh, I, I think that there are certainly... Or do you think they out of them? <laughs> There is interest in spiritual issues in art, but the vocabulary is not there and the spiritual education is not there, that many of them are coming from a secular home, so Mm -hmm. the language isn't there to express that desire and interest. Yeah, I I, I found that and I tried to translate it into sort of art language in some instances, just so I could find out more about what they were thinking. And that worked to a certain extent, But then the only vocabulary that they could use to relate back to me was basically a religious vocabulary. Mystery, um, spiritual, you know, things that they couldn't easily say to um, other people. I I do want to leave, we're going to end the questions because, sorry, time, but we'll we'll get back to some. But I'd just uh, like to end with a little note about Nick uh, Webb who I invited to be here, was hoping he'd be here, but is away and he could join us. And he is, uh, as I said, a professor of critical studies, critical theory at NASCA. And when I went to see him to do a directed study on aesthetics, he was not um, overly optimistic at first. In fact, he was talking on the phone, taking calls while he's talking to me, and I'm thinking, okay. Because for him to do a credit for me here, um, he's, there's nothing in it for him. He's full professor, he can't get You know, there's nothing in it for him. Um, But then I found out that his dissertation for his doctorate was actually on the aesthetics, um, aesthetic experience and Michel Michel Dufresne, a French phenomenologist. And so when I told him that I was interested in that, it's like, all right, I don't ever get to talk to anybody about that sort of thing. (laughs) So I really think there's hope if we can just, you know, help to get some people out of the closet. Well, thank you very much. Uh, We have more coffee and goodies and... uh...